you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mortgage uh, Professionals uh, Canada, Mr. Taylor, who is the President and CEO, and Mr. Kirsner, past Chair Board of Directors. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Kersner. Um, I am the uh, immediate past chair of the board of Mortgage Professionals Canada. Along with me is Mr. Paul Taylor, who is the president and CEO of Mortgage Professionals Canada. Mortgage Professionals Canada is the National Mortgage Industry Association representing 11,500 individuals and 1,000 companies, including mortgage brokerages, lenders, insurers, and industry service providers. Our members make up the largest and most respected network of mortgage professionals in the country whose interests we represent to government, regulators, media, and consumers. Together, we are dedicated to maintaining a high standard of industry ethics, consumer protection, and best practices. The mortgage broker channel originates more than 35% of all mortgages in Canada and 55% of mortgages for first-time homebuyers. That equates to approximately $80 billion in annual economic activity. With this diverse and strong membership, we are uniquely positioned to speak to the issues impacting all aspects of the mortgage origination process. We are pleased to lend our collective membership's recommendations for how the 2019 federal budget can ensure Canada's competitiveness and help grow the middle class. We have previously provided a written submission outlining nine recommendations that, if implemented, would strengthen the middle class the Canadian economy and increase competition within the Canadian mortgage market. This morning, we will outline just some of those recommendations. The first is the government should implement an exemption to the guideline B20 stress test for mortgage holders who have completed and met their obligations of their original mortgage term and who wish to switch to a different lender upon renewal. Individual, additionally, individuals who need to port their mortgage to a different property should also be exempted if no additional funds are required. We propose that a technical adjustment be made for consumers who have a proven history of credit worthiness, evidenced by paying all obligations as agreed through their original mortgage term period, exempting them from stress test qualifications when they port their mortgage or when they renew their mortgage with a different lender. These individuals are responsible borrowers who have a proven track record, have not accumulated additional mortgage debt, and have prudently managed their financial obligations. They are not the high-risk borrowers that the government is concerned with. Restricting these individuals from accessing competitive mortgage rates from other lenders at renewal time only serves to ensure more Canadians are paying higher interest carrying costs than they otherwise could be. The next recommendation is to adjust the November 30, 2016 change to allow for refinances to be included in portfolio insurance up to a 75% loan to value. This adjustment would alleviate some of the competitive disadvantages that the recent changes place on many non-bank lenders. With this amendment, which could be made with a simple technical clarification document rather than an official announcement, non-bank lenders would be better positioned to adjust to the other required changes while remaining adequately capitalized. This adjustment would also ensure greater marketplace competition by assisting smaller lenders to fund their mortgages and would positively benefit competition within the mortgage market. This would only account for a small portion of the recently seen 76 per cent reduction in government-supported portfolio insurance and would keep the integrity of the vast majority of mortgage insurance changes intact. Next recommendation is for both insured and uninsured mortgages to decouple the stress test from the posted Bank of Canada rate and instead set it at 75 basis points or 0.75% above the contract rate. According to calculations conducted by our chief economist, Will Dun Dunning, a 75 basis point stress test achieves an appropriate protection to consumers in the events that rates rise while not unduly pricing too many consumers out of the marketplace. It's important that a market-based rate be used to calculate the stress test to ensure the appropriate balance between stability and affordability be found for Canadians. According to our analysis, reducing the stress test to 75 basis points would allow for an additional 37,500 Canadian families to qualify for mortgage each year in today's interest rate environment, noting that as interest rates rise, as we suspect they may continue to rise, fewer and fewer people will qualify. 
Making this minor adjustment to the stress test ensures that policy intent of the stress test is maintained while improving the competitiveness required to sustain a healthy and robust housing market. Um, recommendation four, we would recommend implementing an indexation to the inflation limit or, or an indexation for inflation to the mortgage insurance cap. Uh, also consider setting regional limits that better reflect localized housing market conditions rather than setting a national standard. Um, adjusting the valuation eligibility cap for mortgage insurers would actually help mitigate against the shifting portfolios of mortgage insurers. The new cap removes eligibility for mortgage insurance for a large number of homes in Toronto and Vancouver, which are very liquid markets with high income and high credit borrowers. And this is resulting in a higher percentage of insured mortgages in illiquid markets that have higher loss rates and weaker incomes and credit scores. This, therefore, is creating a riskier aggregate portfolio and geographic footprint for mortgage insurers and ultimately increases the risk for the guaranteeing taxpayers. Regionalizing valuation caps and indexing the caps to inflation would allow for a slow, safe increase in the caps for mortgage insurance while still maintaining the desired policy objective. Regionalizing will ensure mortgage insurers are able to continue to service high value areas, which perhaps counterintuitively are often less risky due, to, due largely to the liquidity of those markets, and it ensures overall safer, more balanced portfolios for the insured properties. Um, without, an in <laughs> without an indexation for inflation, it's harder to say than it sounds, uh, the cap is actually decreasing in real dollars the number of properties that can be insured regardless of what loan to value is uh, in place. Recommendation number five is to Im similarly implement an indexation to inflation for the RRSP home buyers plan limit. Uh, many young Canadians need to save in order to obtain a down payment, uh, many more actually as a result of the recent mortgage insurance changes. Uh, in a recent survey we conducted, 48% of soon-to-be Canadian homeowners said that they had less than 20% down payment, and of those, 31% said that they would need to withdraw from their RRSP and able to afford their purchase. In addition, 63% of Canadian homeowners said they would have been unable to afford their home without some form of down payment assistance. Indexing the RRSP home buyers plan to inflation would be a positive way to help many young Canadians use more of their savings to purchase a home thereby assisting them to reach the middle class. Uh, last recommendation today, We've, we would support implementing interest-free loans to municipalities to help develop land to create more supply in the housing market. Affordability and livability are important to help grow Canada's competitive advantage for human and financial capital. Two of Canada's global cities, Toronto and Vancouver, have experienced rapid price growth over the last number of years, which has created competitiveness challenges in those markets. The best way to afford, oh sorry, the best way to address affordability challenges in Toronto and Vancouver is really through the addition of supply. Um, the federal government is probably best positioned to assist by providing financing options to the provinces and municipalities to incent development. Uh, we believe this can be best done through interest-free loans, uh, potentially through CMHC. This can certainly help with the cost development process and help municipalities ensure that the primary infrastructure is in place in the ground uh, before construction for these residences has actually begun. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to present the recommendations this morning. We look very much forward to any questions you may have. Uh, to uh, Paul and Mark, um, <coughs> great, to, great to see you again. Uh, the two comments you had about the, the stress test rate the posted rate. Uh, look, housing affordability is, is a big thing. It's a big thing for millennials. It's the number one rated issue for millennials and first time home buyers. Um, the stress test that currently has on, if you can comment on that briefly. And in terms of the market dynamics, the technical issue, when you go to uh, renew your mortgage, not refinance, but renew your mortgage, the ability to go to another lender without having to incur the stress test, how important is that for consumer choice and competition? Thanks very much indeed for the question. Um, the, the stress test is a 2% rate currently above posted. Uh, very, I'm oversimplifying it, but essentially if, if a contract is issued for five year term today at around a 3.5%, people have to qualify at a 5.5% rate. Um, the logic is that you can show that you can manage the payments if interest rates rise over time in the future. 
Interest rates have risen across the last year. There's actually been four increases, so we're about a percentage point higher organically now in the market than we were at the time that the stress test was introduced. And the longer the stress test stays in place without some adjustment, the more people you're actually pushing out of the marketplace. Uh, First-time buyers, young middle-class Canadians are already having an incredibly difficult time getting the first foot on that first rung of a ladder. I think it's probably really incumbent upon government to start taking a look seriously at reducing that. The, the housing market numbers across the last year have been a whole lot slower than even average transaction numbers, so we can see there's a number of first-time buyers and sort of the traditional move-up buyers at the bottom of the ladder are also having a hard time moving forward, growing families, need an extra bedroom, et cetera. Um, that stress test creates a pretty significant reduction in overall borrowing power, so we really do recommend a reduction of that. Um, to the other question about moving at renewal time without having to requalify, I think it just makes good sense from a competitive market standpoint. I don't think lenders are incented to offer their most competitive rate at renewal if they understand that there's a hurdle for consumers in their ability to take that loan somewhere else. And I, I mean, we see, Mark can probably comment firsthand that oftentimes it's advantageous to an individual to take that mortgage to a different lender at that five-year point. So I think the, the policy, while well-intentioned to ensure that people didn't get sort of stuck, has, has actually had the reverse effect and trapped a few people in higher interest rate than they otherwise thank, would have. Thank you. I'll maybe move now to, the, to, to Mr. Taylor, the mortgage, from the mortgages. A um, couple of things, I guess, in regards to the, some of the changes that have been made to mortgage rules, in particular, I guess, the stress test. Um, I've heard, you know, some pretty significant estimates in terms of um, the number of people it's sort of potentially taking out of the ability to have uh, home ownership, uh, and uh, also the f effect it's had. I mean, you're essentially making sort of sort of policy. This government's been making policy for sort of dealing with two cities in, in Canada, and it, it affects the markets in every other uh, part of the country as well. And we're seeing, you know, softening. Uh, uh, housing markets and you know prices uh, going down and it's becoming very difficult for people you know in, I think about my province Alberta where people are struggling right now uh, and some people are having to try and sell a home but they're gonna have to try and sell it at a loss as a result uh, because it's softening things up so I wonder if you could just comment on that uh, impact if you've seen that impact as well in terms of the number of people being able to enter the market and if it's having an effect on, on prices in places where it obviously wasn't intended to. Sure um, I, I think Anybody that's been paying attention actually to real estate transactions will see that there's been a, a pretty significant fall off in that since the beginning of the year when the, the uninsured stress test was introduced. Um, we're really quite concerned that it really does disproportionately affect first time buyers and younger Canadians. So, from a, a long term economic health of the country perspective, if we're not enabling folks to start to build equity early on, then a decade from now, the average balance sheet of the Canadian is going to be a whole lot worse off. I, that's not really going to be a great um, news story for us. I, I think it's, it's really incumbent upon government to take a look at the fact that interest rates have risen as well since the time that this stress test has been introduced, which organically will push some people out of the marketplace. So we're almost doubling down on the impact of some of these increases. Um, I understand that there is concern about debt to income ratios and things, but I think it's also really important to make a clear distinction between debt that's used with an asset to secure it behind it versus things that are sort of not secured and therefore much more discretionary. There's also no crisis really. The arrears rates on mortgages were at 23, 24 basis points, so in, in real clear numbers, 23 or 24 out of 10,000 homeowners were behind on their mortgage payments. I feel like we've put protections in place to make sure that we have a stable financial system, which is, of course, a, a laudable um, goal, but we seem to have lost sight a little bit about the overall health of the middle-class Canadian that we're trying to support longer term. Do you have a comment on that, Mark? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just some context and uh, full disclosure. Um, spent the summer meeting with many businesses in my writing. I've come from a, a heavy, heavily proud industrial uh, community called Brantford, Ontario, and um, two of them, all, all, all uh, the major six of them who would employ somewhere around 2,000 people in total, 
Uh, two of them have gone on the national news saying uh, they're on the precipice of either going bankrupt or moving to the United States. I'll give you the names of the company because they are on record, public record, Patriot Forge in Brantford, one of the largest, uh, the largest forging company of specialty forging, uh, employs approximately 400 people. Gem Manufacturing does metal strapping and uh, they have a workforce of just under 100. And both of those owners have, uh, have been at committee over the summer here in Ottawa or have been uh, 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 profiled on national media. So it is real. And I'll give you an example. The industry I was in, I had my own business for 30 years, close to just under 30 years in the construction and development business. The price of a new, and I was on your side as president of Ontario Home Builders in 1992-93. The price today of a new home when the keys are handed over by the builder to the, to the new owner of her home, 35 to 45% of the price of the home is government taxation or red tape or approvals process fees, the price of a new home. People talk about affordability of a new home. The governments at all levels, is all three levels, is taking in some jurisdictions up to 45% of the price of that home. And I wanna to talk to the mortgage people about this because everyone cries about affordability and you had, you had mentioned entry level buyers and the effects that of the price of the home and the affordability of the home being distorted by two major markets in this country. Hence, we get the rules that affect communities like mine of 100,000 people and put small business, small builders like me, 20 employees out of business. So what's your thoughts or has your association ever dealt with the fact of the makeup of a price of a home? Let's say 35, 40%, 45% being government imposed costs that end up in the consumer paying at the end of the day. Remember, all the other costs, the land, the bill, the materials, the labor, everything else is the other 55 to 65%. What are your thoughts on that? Um, thank you very much indeed for the question. So the recommendation that we're making regarding providing interest-free loans to municipalities actually to a degree ties into this. I think that there's been an awful lot of measures that have been implemented that are essentially trying to tamp down demand when the answer to the problem in Toronto and Vancouver is probably adding supply. The only way to make sure that you mitigate prices in just those two regions is to ensure that there's enough places for the number of people coming into the cities to live. Um, if I understand that the, the cost that we can put pipe in the ground to make some of the property that is earmarked as residential land through the city of Toronto is, is very high. And so I think that the city is probably trying to get some money to allow them even to begin that development. If there is a mechanism to help funding, that might offset that. Um, certainly those costs need to be examined though. We spend an awful lot of time in discussion with Canadian Home Builders Association as well when we're considering our strategies around these things. Those costs are very, very high. Can I, can I also refer to 2008 to 2012 when we were dealing with the subprime mortgage situation in the United States, fueling a, you know, being the impetus of a global recession that this country went through relatively unscathed. I worked very closely with the finance minister during those years, uh, Mr. Flaherty. And Mr. Flaherty came out with policies and watched housing, watched mortgage levels, and in fact, restricted mortgage levels during that period of time as well. This government has taken the scene to take them further for the protection of, say, a subprime mortgage collapsing Canada. Is that something that you have ever seen on the horizon for Canada or would see in the future? Uh, that's You want to take that one? Guys, fairly quick answer. Uh, we, we see the markets as two completely separate markets. We, we, we believe that prudent measures taken 10 years ago and, and taken recently are uh, important to ensure the sustainability and the confidence in the Canadian housing markets. Um, when we had, when you were able to refinance a home at 95% of the value and take 100% financing out on a 640 Beacon credit, uh, the, there were steps taken to bring prudent lending practices uh, in, in, in Canada. 
what we our recommendations here are to tweak the most recent recommendations to ensure that Canadians have the opportunity to afford to get into the housing market. We think some of the changes here uh, are keeping too many Canadians out of uh, the housing market who would otherwise be very prudent lenders. The arrears rates are very low, uh, portfolios are performing well, credit scores for homeowners have gone up and up and up each and every year. So we don't see the correlation between what's happened in the Canadian market and what happened in the U.S. market 10 years ago. We see the lending atmosphere completely different. The arrears rates there were 8, 9, 10 percent. As uh, Mr. Taylor mentioned here, we're under a quarter of a percent uh, at 90 days arrears right now. So um, what we're advocating for is to have the opportunity to get more Canadians into the housing market uh, prudently. Uh, which we also believe will help with affordability as well because right now we've got a lot of those Canadians who are staying either in the basement of mom and dad or renting, which further takes out uh, stock from the rental pools, tightens up the, vac the vacancy markets and, and rentals and has a, an impact on affordable housing there as well.